Welcome back to the Photography Podcast. I'm your host Luke and today I'll be talking all about shutter speed and how it factors into exposure. Now the camera's shutter is a curtain that sits in front of the camera's image sensor and it opens to allow light into the sensor. And the amount of time that the shutter is open is called the shutter speed. If you have a DSLR camera with a mirror, the shutter is behind the mirror and in front of the sensor. For mirrorless cameras, they do not have a mirror in front of the shutter and the sensor, which often allows mirrorless cameras to be faster. You may often hear the term FPS or frames per second. This is how many images a camera is able to take in one second. Also, when shooting with a DSLR, when the shutter is open, the mirror must move out of the way, causing the viewfinder to go black when an image is taken. With mirrorless cameras, this is often not the case because there's no blackout time because there's no mirror moving out of the way for the shutter to open. So with DSLRs, it's a lot more mechanical with the mirror having to move out of the way. Before we get deep into shutter speed here, I want to quick talk about frames per second and give you a little bit of background about that. So a camera may advertise a certain number of frames per second that the camera can take. However, there is a buffer on your camera that's sort of an internal memory that holds the image data before and sort of while the camera is writing the photo information to the memory card. If you're shooting in burst mode or in a fast succession of shots, your camera may stop taking photos after a little while because the buffer is full. It's not a problem, but you will need to wait for the camera to write some of that image data to the memory card before taking more pictures because of the buffer being full. The image quality settings will also affect how many images your buffer can hold because if you're shooting a raw file that's a very large file, the buffer will not be able to hold as many of those kind of images versus a high resolution JPEG, it'll be able to hold more because there's smaller file sizes. And likewise with a lower resolution JPEG, it'll be able to hold more because it's a smaller file. It's also important to note that having the proper memory card for your camera to allow it to write the data at the fastest rate possible, that is key too. And we'll talk more in depth about memory cards in a future episode, but I just wanted to put that out there too. Whenever I worked in a camera store, a lot of people would always ask me why our memory cards were so expensive, and I would have to explain that we don't sell the slower, cheaper memory cards, we only sell the faster ones because it makes it so much better for the buffer to write the data to the memory card if your memory card is a faster card. But like I say, we'll have a future episode all about memory cards and storage. But to tie it all together, just because a camera is advertised as saying, let's say five pr- it can take five frames per second, it does not mean that you can sit there with your finger on the shutter and it will take five frames per second continuously. Depending on the buffer and the memory card read and write speed and your image file sizes, this will all factor into sort of the frames per second that you're able to take and how long of a burst you're able to take. All right, so let's get in depth here about shutter speed and how that affects the exposure of your image. So the longer the shutter is open, the more light it will let in. However, this comes at a cost. While the shutter is open, collecting the data and collecting the light, it is also collecting data of what's happening in the scene. If there is any movement within the scene or movement in front of the camera, this will show up as blur on your image. In order to reduce blur, you will need to put a shorter shutter speed or a faster shutter speed which will cause less light to be able to come in to your image, in which case then you would have to change the aperture and ISO to accommodate for that change. 
So shutter speed is often measured in seconds, and it will often be displayed as a fraction of tenths, hundredths, or thousandths of a second. Most cameras will have a fast shutter speed of like one four thousandth or one eight thousandth of a second, and a bulb mode at the complete other end for longer exposures, or usually cameras will have a 30 second mode as a long shutter speed. Sometimes you'll want to freeze the action in your photo, such as a bird flying, and in that case you would want to use a fast shutter speed. So something like on the extreme side, one eight thousandth of a second. That's a real quick clip and it won't capture much blur because it's so fast. However, if you want to have one of those photos with the waterfall that looks smooth and milky and nice, you'll want to use a slower shutter speed to capture that moment of the water sort of falling over the rocks and things. But with a slower shutter speed, you'll want to use a tripod in order to reduce camera shake because the motion that you want is the water falling over the rocks, not your camera moving and causing the scene to be blurry. Cameras and lenses often have stabilization mechanisms to help use slower shutter speeds without needing a tripod. If a camera has stabilization built into its sensor, this is often called IBIS, or in-body image stabilization. Lenses that have stabilization may use different acronyms to show this, including VR for vibration reduction, IS for image stabilization, or VC for vibration compensation, or some others. If you're using a tripod, you want to turn the stabilization off, because the way stabilization works is it's continually trying to stabilize the camera or the lens, and if the camera or lens is already stable on a tripod, this may lead to slight image degradation. Image stabilization operates like a gyroscope in order to keep the image as steady as possible. Image stabilization has come a long way over the years with in-body image stabilization becoming something that's very popular now with mirrorless cameras, but this image stabilization does not accommodate for all movement. It's meant to help with slight vibrations from your hands while you're hand holding a camera taking a picture. It's not going to allow you to take a 30 second exposure hand holding your camera. It's going to look like a blurry mess. So let's talk about while you're out and about taking photos, what shutter speed should you use? So something to note while you're hand holding your camera and deciding on shutter speed is that ideally it should be double of what your focal length is. So for example, if you're using a 50 millimeter lens, your handheld shutter speed should be no less than 1 100th of a second or faster. This is not always possible, so another rule of thumb is to have your shutter speed be at least the same as your focal length. So going along with my same example from before, if your lens is 50 millimeters, you should not shoot lower than 1 50th of a second if you're hand holding the camera. This rule is to get sort of the ideal results, but it might not always be possible. And feel free to use a tripod or a monopod when you're shooting in lower light situations or other situations where you might need slower shutter speeds. Remember that if the image on the back of your camera looks clear, be sure to zoom in and see if it actually is clear. You'd be surprised how many photos I've taken and they look fine on the camera. I bring them up on a big screen on my computer and they look blurry because I didn't have my shutter speed fast enough. Personally, I'm not a very steady hand, so I try to put my shutter speed as fast as possible when I'm hand holding. But like I say, this isn't always the case, and depending on the circumstances, a little bit of motion blur is probably acceptable in some situations. So this 
next part is going to get a little more in depth and I'm hoping to have an entire podcast dedicated to using flash and also studio lighting but let's talk about shutter speed using a flash here for a brief moment So all cameras have a maximum shutter speed they can use with a flash. This is normally 1 250th of a second, but it could vary depending on your camera. When using flash, shutter speed controls ambient light. So if you want to control how bright your photo is when using flash, aperture is what changes this. Now when I'm speaking about ambient light, I'm talking about any light that is not created by the flash. So like I say, if you want to change how bright the flash is for your image, you'll need to change the aperture. But all shutter speed will change is how much of the natural room light is let into the image, not the flash light or the light from the flash. Like I said, we'll cover this more in depth in a future episode when talking about flash. But the flash freezes the subject and allows for slower shutter speeds while still freezing what you are photographing. So try not to get hung up on if you're wanting to freeze motion while using a flash. You say, well, I can't put my shutter speed high enough. Yeah, don't get hung up on that. What shutter speed does is it controls ambient light when you're using a flash. I know I've said this before but I'll say it again just as a reminder. It's usually easier if you underexpose an image and then lighten it on the computer rather than trying to bring back lost highlights or bright areas. All right, I think that's enough bad advice I have for you for now about shutter speed. I'll see you later, Shutterbugs.